Hey guys and welcome to today's video where I'll be going through 10 safe plants you can use with your leopard geckos and don't worry you are not limited to these plants but these are just ones that not only do I know are safe but are easy to find. So our first option is aloe. Now aloe actually covers over 500 species, but some of the most commonly used aloes include aloe vera, which is an evergreen perennial. I'm, not, I'm sure we're all very familiar with that. A tiger tooth aloe, which if you want something that looks like a cactus, but none of the risk, that's something to go with. If you want something with a bit more color, a bit more to it, then you could look at the golden tooth aloe. And I've seen these popping up in garden centers lately, especially I think they're called the pink blush ones something with pink on them they look really cool the lace aloe is also a really nice one or you can even look at sunset aloe or shortleaf aloe but as I said there are so many different species I'd highly recommend looking more into this group of plants the next option is actually two cactus, believe it or not, the Christmas and the Easter cactus. Now these are actually safe for your reptiles as they don't have sharp prickles on them, if anything they don't have any, and both of them will eventually bloom which looks really nice in your tank. Then we have the snake plant or mother-in-law's tongue plant. Now I actually already grow these in my crested gecko tank, but actually since they're succulents, an arid environment may actually suit them even better. Now these can get particularly tall, so I would probably suggest planting them near the back of your leopard gecko enclosure, but definitely a plant that I've tried and tested with a lot of success. The next option is Echeverias, also known as hens and chicks. Like aloes, there are so many different species. I mean, basically this list is mainly like groups of plants, but I didn't want to go specifically because there are just so many you can choose from. And they're incredibly common in the houseplant area of garden centers and even supermarkets, or if you're lucky, in your local reptile shop. Now, personally for me, I do find a lot of my plants in garden centers and in supermarkets. I just make sure to clean the roots, clean the plant and repot them in a reptile safe substrate. But yes, definitely look into this group because there are so many different options that you can use. Next we're going to quickly move away from succulents and cacti and look at sedgegrass. Mm. Definitely, definitely not as attractive as succulents, definitely something that looks a little bit ugly if we're being honest, but they work really well in arid tanks, they can provide shelter or at least something to hide behind or in, and they really help to achieve that scrubland look. The next plant is a living stone. There's actually around 40 different species of these and they always stand out to me because they're just so bizarre. They're a type of succulent, but as their name suggests, they look like stones. Now they have very slow growth rates and aren't necessarily gonna uh, provide coverage or shelter or take up a lot of room in your tank, but they're definitely a unique plant to feature in your landscape. The next is a jade plant, also known as a lucky plant or money plant. You can get these as small succulents, but you can also get them bonsai or, you know, fully grown, they get quite big. I've only really used these in fairy gardens. I once did a fairy garden. It completely failed. Some of the plants died off. I repotted some of the stuff and I had a jade plant in there and I forgot to water it for ages and it survived. And as soon as I started watering it, it was like nothing had ever happened. So definitely a hardy plant from my experience. The only thing that would put me off using it with my reptiles is even though it does feature in multiple safe plant lists for reptiles and a lot of people use it, this particular plant, if cats or dogs eat their leaves, it can be toxic, it can kind of upset their stomach. So to me, with a leopard gecko who might strike at a cricket, might get a leaf, what how would that impact the gecko? But as I said, it really does feature on a lot, if not all of the reptile safe plant lists I have seen. So it must be okay. Maybe it's something that if you had a tortoise, you'd have to really think about. Um, but this, this is an option. Next are peperomias, also known as radiator plants. Once again, there's a whole range of species to choose from and they tend to be fairly easy to find. If you type in peperomia or radiator plant on like a reptile site, quite a few options should come up. From what I've seen, depending on the species, some do better in more tropical environments, some do better in more arid environments. You may have to check that out to see what specifically would work for you. But these are definitely ones that are safe and easy to find. 
The next plant is known as a zebra cactus or sometimes a zebra plant succulent. It is actually a succulent and not a cactus. It looks somewhat similar to a lace aloe. I really like that sort of look. To me, it kind of feels kind of prehistoric. It, it just looks really cool to me. They're native to South Africa, so they can deal with higher temperatures. They do prefer partial sun and are often found in the wild in the shade of rocks, which would look really cool in a leopard gecko tank. But also I found that they are particularly hardy succulents if you are new to succulents that that's a type that people would recommend so once again a hardy nice succulent for your enclosure and finally we have air plants now personally i did try to put these in a crested gecko setup but sadly i think with the humidity and the daily spraying of the tank it just sort of made them rot so i feel like maybe an arid environment would be better just make sure there is good ventilation and you make sure you do miss them occasionally or some people will take them all out soak them then put them back now I've had success growing them outside of tanks on a piece of cork bark and driftwood and we've even seen one of them bloom which was really cool to see because that doesn't happen too often usually you'll find the air plants are kind of slow growing nothing much changes but the good thing with them is you're not restricted to planting them on the floor of the tank if there's an area that looks quite bare somewhere like on wood or up the background somewhere you can't plant a regular plant then the air plant is awesome for that and some people attach it with a hot glue gun or just fix it in place wedge it in place it's very versatile there are tons to choose from and in my experience they're quite easy to find in garden centers so I hope this has helped. As I said, this is certainly not all the plants you can use. These are just ones that I know are not only safe, but fairly easy to find. I know there are some that will come up on the safe plant list, but I mean, nowhere seems to ever carry them. That It's very hard to come by them. So I wanted to sort of show you what's out there, what's easy to get and what you can use. But anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I may do one for crested geckos if that's something you'd like to see then make sure you leave a like and if you haven't already please subscribe we are getting so close to 200,000 it's crazy it's so unbelievable so thank you to everyone who's already subscribed and people in the future who are about to subscribe thank you uh, but I hope you've enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and goodbye